This year for Children in Need, something very special is going to happen. For the first time in four years, Wick High School will be treated to a musical performance by an all-star teacher band. But this will not be a usual run-of-the-mill teacher performance of mediocrity. For the first time in the long, proud musical history of Wick High School, a supergroup has been put together. A musical virtuoso, Mr Aiken has demonstrated his piano playing finesse on several occasions, but few people realise that his piano playing career started long before he joined Wick High School. After getting his first piano, age three, Mr Aiken soon stood out from the other children, a child prodigy. Young Mr Aiken would often hear comparisons to one Wolfgang Mozart. A taste for musical theatre and a strong love of jazz took Mr Aiken to new heights. After leaving school and the University of Fine Musical Art, Mr Aiken went on to fill concert halls, opera houses and stadia. His crowning glory was performing Puccini's La Boheme to a private audience with Her Majesty the Queen Mother in 2002. Time soon changed and the once popular piano playing of this young maestro soon fell to the wayside. Miss Draken and his piano soon became a thing of the past and once again the recorder reclaimed its popularity with the masses. Unable to fill concert halls, Mr. Aiken moved through clubs and bars, egging out a living from tips. Finally he saw out his days playing popular karaoke gyms aboard the Pentalina, before giving up and turning to teaching as his chosen career. Since joining Wick High School, Mr. Aiken has demonstrated his ability to tink on the ivories, but now is his chance to show again to the world the remarkable talent he has in his keyboard typing fingertips. So really, yeah, this is it's beneath me really. Um, from years playing, playing piano to concert halls, uh, but we're doing it for the children. As Mr. Broad says, it's the needy children. I mean, I know I'm the pretty one in the group, and I, I think really I'm going to carry them all. Um, but I can see number ones, I can see platinum singles, I can see going to America. We'll just see how it goes. Just say the name, and the teenage girls and female staff alike will swim and feel their heartbeat quicken. Mr. McKenzie wasn't voted sexiest teacher in Bliss magazine in 2005 for nothing. Mr. McKenzie has always challenged himself to be the best. Whether it's winning seven marathons in as many days, or being voted best rhythm guitarist in an official all teacher rock band, Mr. McKenzie won't settle for second best. Mr. McKenzie is so good at his current job that he's employed as an English teacher a guidance teacher and a senior leader. That's right, look out Mr McIntyre. Mr McKenzie likes to be at the top. Musically, Mr McKenzie was a gifted child. Taking lead roles in high school productions, he went on to master all stringed instruments. Having spent three years in a Shaolin monastery meditating, Mr McKenzie found his musical epiphany. He came back and released his first album, Reflections of the G Chord an entire album with just one chord, but with every possible meaning. Mr McKenzie combined his passions for teaching and for music in 2007 and formed the most successful teacher rock band in Wick High School's history. After an almost sellout tour of Wick, Mr McKenzie decided to split from the band and pursue a solo career. His decision was not taken well with the other bandmates. Mr Young walked out and disappeared into rock and roll obscurity and Mr Cunningham boarded his private jet heading to Bermuda, never to return. Mr McKenzie's solo career never took off, even with his overwhelming popularity. Mr Broad is also joining Take This. There may be friction and tension over musical direction. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's great being back in music. Uh, you know, obviously I had a lot of success with the Flaming Daphne's uh, Myself and Johnny uh, made made a lot of history with that, but uh, it's good to be back. You know, it's good to be working with some new people. Um, I can't say I'm that impressed with them so far. Uh, not an awful lot of talent, but you know, I'll probably carry it through uh, as I did probably before with with Johnny. Um, I mean, he's got absolutely no timing whatsoever, but you know, we will try our best. And uh, I'm looking forward to the new single, and of course, uh, taking it as far as we can. As a young child, Mr. Broad always dreamed of becoming a musician. Unlucky for him, he was rubbish. No, seriously, the musical talent of a teaspoon. 
However, due to an administrational error, he was accepted in, into the Juilliard Institute of Musical Art. For his first exam, he performed The Wheels on the Bus, and the school realised they had the wrong candidate. The school immediately expelled him, and he got a job as a trolley dolly in his local Lidl. Years later, wanting a career change, he moved to Brazil to work alongside musical genius Wagner. Unfortunately, this was short-lived because of a heated argument over who in the duo was allowed to have facial hair. Wagner left and made a successful career on the TV show X Factor. Returning to the UK, a homeless and jobless broad, desperate for money, claimed to be Guy Garvey, the front man available. Spending years getting into top restaurants and clubs in the West End of London for free, he was finally caught out when the real Guy Garvey called security on him upon finding Broad in his Glastonbury changing room. Finding himself jobless again, he returned to teaching and, as they say, the rest is history. Yeah, Children in Need 2011, um, really looking forward to it. Love doing whatever I can just to, just to help children in need, especially. Um, that's the chair, by the way. Um, so yeah, music, well, you know, it's always been a big part of, of my life. Um, as you recall, I was the, the front man of the band for the Daphne's. Um, and I think that's really much going to transfer into this. I think people are going to recognise this as, as my band. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, there's a couple of guys out there who, you know, more dancers really than musicians. Uh, Mr. Tate, for example. Um, but no, we're looking forward to it. Um, not really sure how I feel about working with Mr. McKenzie again. It's always, you know, he's always on the back bit timing. I think timing's, you know, uh, subjective. I think it's something that real musicians don't need to worry about these things. It just sort of flows through. It's just more, it's more talent, really, is what I have. Um, so yeah, if I, if I can do anything um, to help kids in need, uh, like those ones there, yeah, you especially, um, then yeah, anything, anything I can do to help. Peace out. Are we going to um, discuss my fee at some point? I don't, sorry, here, you turn that off. No. Right. Um, <laughs> anyway, right, uh, I think that's my limousine. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. In his youth, Mr. Tate was the finest male ballet dancer of his time. In his late teens, he attended the prestigious Danseurs de Fantasy Ballet School in southern France, where he picked up numerous awards and performed in the world tour of Swan Lake. In the late 90s, bored of being the best, he changed his style to Latin dance, specialising in American swing. This meant a move to Havana, Cuba, where he learnt the dance from the local experts. For about three years, he went by the stage name Adalberto Martinez. He participated in more than 50 Mexican movies throughout his career, and he also participated in many television series. In April 2003, in an attempt to get away from dancing and to man up, he went back to the UK to study engineering and eventually he became a technical teacher at Wick High School. It's been a great, great experience producing this video and stuff. Pity but people we've had to work with, you know, Mr Broad, Mr McKenzie. Sooner I get back to ballet dancing and Latin dancing the better, I think, you know. Just as well we've had Mikey and Matthew here to keep things right and keep the whole show on the road, otherwise it just would never have happened, like, you know. It's been great, yep. Yeah. Mr Sandetsky grew up in Poland to a strict daily regime of intense heavy metal. Loud music was in his blood before he was born, with both his parents working as roadies for Led Zeppelin. Mr Sandetsky had learned to power slide before he could walk, and had thrashed his first axe before joining Poland's award-winning School of Rock. Chords and long power solos were instilled into his mind, however, the emergence of hip-hop from the mean streets of Philadelphia soon found its way into this talented youngster. Ostracised by his rock-loving parents, Mr. Sandetsky moved to the United States, where he worked briefly alongside an up-and-coming but unknown artist by the name of Will Smith. Sandetsky told Smith of his anger and sadness in falling out with his father, and agreed to return to Europe and to heavy metal. Years later, in becoming a father himself, Smith would go on to write Just the Two of Us, and dedicated to Sandetsky. Mr. Sandetsky returned to Poland but was unable to fit into heavy metal circles. He moved to Finland in 1995 and formed the rock band Lordi. On the 20th of May 2006, Lordi made history by winning the Eurovision Song Contest 
held in Athens with the song Hard Rock Hallelujah, becoming the first Finnish group to win the contest. After winning, Sandetsky quit the band, handing over the lead to Tommy Patansu. He headed to the UK hoping for a fresh start and a new challenge. That summer he was the newest member of staff to join Wick High School. At first when I started, when I heard about the project, I wasn't sure. It's not my cup of tea. But then I heard who I will work with, the other teachers, Mikey and Matthew. I thought, this is a great cause. Why not do it? So now I'm looking forward to see the final product. I hope you all enjoy it too, and we'll raise a lot of money with it. Don't give them abuse or dirtier oh, looks. Give generously. Give generously. Watch your money go to a great cause. Give generously. Oh, we at Wick High. Donation this The Good luck to you guys with two day stage performance. Today this could be the biggest show of our lives. Children in need. 